Yeah, so on how to stealth camp, best cities for stealth camping. On this episode, we are talking about how to stealth camp and some of the best cities we encountered for stealth camping. Yeah, we stealth camped more than anything on our trip, didn't we? Yes. Yeah, it seemed that way for sure. We got really good at it. We did get very good. And the nice part about living in a van is it combines the best of both worlds. So you have your transportation and you have a place to sleep. So you have your accommodations and transportation in one vehicle, one stealthy vehicle. Well, if you want to stealth camp, it needs to be stealthy. So we we didn't pay we didn't pay a single dollar to stay anywhere, right? No. Not even in uh, like BLM land and national forests and everywhere. Not in New York City. Not in Canada. Wow. That's cool. But yeah, we did mainly stealth camping. And I would say, I mean, number one right away is even if you're really good at stealth camping or you know how to stealth camp, if your van's not stealthy, then it's kind of pointless. Right? Yeah. And we spoke about this previously when we talked about getting our van, but there was a reason behind having no windows and having the appearance of the van kind of a little less nice to look like a beat up van that some contractor was driving around um, to make it stealthy and not have windows so people could look in so yeah we had the partition uh but not only did we not or not only did were we really good at stealth camping we didn't even get like a knock or like a warning or nothing we were so paranoid at first but So, of course, if you're doing a lot of your van trip on the western part of the United States, you don't even have to think about stealth camping that much because there is so much BLM and there's national forests everywhere and there are so many free places to camp on the western part of the U.S. that we went our first few months without even having to think about stealth camping, but we knew when we were getting closer to Northern California and California, it was going to be something we were going to have to do. And luckily, our first time we self-camped, it was by accident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was after uh, it was after our wine tours and went to the brewery, right? With the uh, folks from Nelson. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we, we were in Kelowna, British Columbia, and we were not sober. And our van was parked in a parking lot. And we were right? hungry. Uh, yeah, we were hungry. <laughs> And this was like, had to be at least midnight or after. Definitely. Yeah. So we wanted to go to somewhere to get something to eat. And there was a Dairy Queen (laughs) pretty close nearby. That's always a staple, Dairy Queen. And uh, we just so happened, like, it just so happened that it was like this perfect, we didn't even know where we parked on the street was like the perfect stealth camp uh, parking spot. Sitting in our van to our right was Dairy Queen and to our left was some residential houses and a bunch of vehicles parked on the street yeah it was really odd and then but then we learned that that's exactly what you're looking for you're looking for like a mixed use area like part part residential part commercial um or industrial yeah or industrial apartments are are definitely a good sign for street parking But of course, it was our first time, so we did mess up. We didn't realize how close we were to the main street, so it was very noisy. There were a lot of lights, so it was very bright inside the van. But for not being sober, needing a place to stay, and being our first night of stealth camping, I would say it went great. Yeah, so what we looked for, um, just like going forward when we were in cities and we were looking to park, uh, what... I'm, what I remember doing is Googling uh, where apartments are. That yeah. was like our number one go-to. But sometimes it wouldn't work. Sometimes the apartments only had their own little designated parking spot and we still couldn't park there. Or they're in like a weird cul-de-sac where they're off the road and people aren't parking on the street. Yeah. So then we started looking at industrial areas like uh, car, car shop, like car shops. Yeah, car or like where painters are and different like plumbing and those type of industrial areas. But even though those are very stealthy, you are going to be woken up at like the crack of dawn because yeah. those workers are getting in their vans and starting their day off. Yeah, true. And I mean, the number one thing, especially is use common sense. We would park our van and I would scout the entire street for like some obscure sign that we might have missed to where we were going to get towed or we were going to get a ticket 
or in especially New York City in some places where we're going to have to be like, oh, well, we have to leave this spot at 6 a.m. So maybe we don't want to wake up at 6 a.m. to move the van. Yeah, we started becoming a lot more patient about it. Like at first we were like, okay, let's find a spot. And we like need to find a spot before it gets dark. And, and all we this. get in fights and it'd be like yeah, so not fun. <laughs> we started, we learned to just be patient with it. And like, even if we found an okay spot, we, we would skip it. Be like, all right, that'll be plan B. Let's keep going down these other streets that potentially could be better. And then we would always find something great, like under a big tree, no lights, near a, like near a park, not right next to a park, but um, just Near great. parks are good. Yeah, near parks are, you know, like city parks or like public parks. Because, uh, and then, you know, some sometimes there's signs where you can't park there overnight, but sometimes there's not. And then as far as, uh, as far as what are some of the best cities in your opinion, that we went to that were good for stealth camping? We already said it, but being in the Pacific Northwest, not only do you have BLM and national forests, but so many cities in the Pacific Northwest have bomb street parking and stealth camping availability. I think our, and maybe it was because we were brand new to it, but I really liked Vancouver. It was pretty oh, yeah. easy. And we're in Kitsilano Beach area. It was awesome. Yeah, Vancouver was great. <laughs> I mean, they don't even, like, try to be stealthy there. They have, like, RVs parked, you know? So we felt like we were we were extremely stealthy because they just had RVs parked everywhere, at, at least in Kitsilano. Yeah, on 4th Avenue in Kitsilano, the one street we parked in all night, there were campers pop-up campers and like the truck beds so we are by far the most stealthy so i never felt like we were going to have an issue and we didn't no uh, i mean a city that we technically didn't even stealth camp in but i felt was was very easy is boise yes. so there we actually parked in a blm land like a mile away from downtown which was the weirdest thing ever with like a view over downtown it's an called awesome 8th, view. 8th street you go up 8th street right yeah. but uh boise is another good one um Portland was very easy. Very easy. There's all these different neighborhoods around Portland, and they're all pretty much mixed use, and it's not too overcrowded. You could always find a pretty decent spot. Um, San Diego is another really, really good one. It was, and then that actually brings me to an old point of what to look for. This is just a would like to have, not have to have, but you really need to look how the streets are angled. Because you don't want to be spending your whole night on a oh, crooked right. street where, like, one of you is, like, rolled on top of the other. Right. Uh, that's true. And we... And, and that's hard. In San Diego, it's... There's some great areas, but they do have hills. But overall, it was very easy. And we stayed on Coronado Beach one oh evening. Oh, Yeah, so that was wonderful. That was wonderful. Um, we don't suggest all residential areas, but if you do it right and... We always, like, almost in a paranoid sense, we would, like, roll into a residential neighborhood, park to where we weren't in front of anyone's house, and, like, instantly turn off the lights, turn off the car, shut the partition, and go in the back. And we would always park, like, at someone's backyard, like, never, (laughs) like, never where any house was, like, facing you. It was always, like, a corner backyard, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, Yeah, the, the, the levelness is difficult. I will say. Uh, That's difficult in all aspects of I guess of you camping. could have like some sort of like, you know, piece of wood or something if you needed to like be level, but then like your whole stealth situation kind of <laughs> goes out the window. So uh, yeah, that is difficult. Like you find a great spot and it's like, yeah, really angled. So that would happen occasionally, which would suck. Yeah. And some nights we slept like that. We didn't have a choice. Yeah. So those are good places. I'm trying to think of any other places that are really easy to stealth camp. Um... Those are the easiest ones, the best ones. Portland, San Diego, Boise, Vancouver, almost all on the West Coast. Uh, except for one city on the West Coast is the absolute worst. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it's the worst. Yeah, it was the worst. It was the worst. San Francisco is nearly impossible. There's a reason why most of the residents don't even have their own cars because they can't park them. And parking a 25 foot vehicle. Oh, Lord. Absolutely awful. Yeah, I know we stressful. Probably, we've like told the story before, but we like broke up in San Francisco trying to find a stealth camping spot, and then it still ended up in the worst spot. So loud. Oh my lord, it was terrible. It was terrible. So, but not only okay. So you have 
the two two elements working against you hardcore. One is there's not a spot. You will not find a spot. You will not find <laughs> a spot, I promise you, anywhere in that city. And then if you do, it's like crazy slanted, decline, incline. Um, it's ridiculous. <sighs> So I think we ended up parking like in an illegal spot because we we're so desperate, like right by a stop sign. By all these trash cans, getting yeah. ready for trash pickup the next day. So I would suggest if you are if you are in San Francisco, I guess go further south, like near San Jose or something because holy moly. It was awful. Terrible. And this one was hard for us, but I think it was because our goal was to spend no money on parking. In Chicago, they have paid parking everywhere. Even oh, yeah, in their residential areas, um, everything is paid street parking because it's privatized. Privatized. Yeah. So that made it difficult just because we were so against paying for parking that. Yeah. But yeah. we ended up with an awesome spot by chance, but we had to like park over a puddle, <laughs> like no kind of in this. W- no one wanted that spot, so it became ours, and we stayed there for two or three days. Yeah, three days. We didn't move it. <laughs> Uh, I was a little bit concerned. It was very much in a residential area, even though Chicago is mixed. But it was use. also a street away from the bars. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, what no was the area cared. called? Do you remember? It Lakeview. Wasn't re- Lakeview. Yeah, Lakeview. Oh, my man, that was awesome. It was one of the worst ones getting there, so we got kind of lucky, and it sucked trying to find that spot. But once we did find it, it was fantastic. Awesome. There was like a Whole Foods down the street, all these bars, all these eateries. It was super close to the L. Yeah. It was an amazing spot once we found it. But it took us... Good I remember spot. we ate our pizza, left to go find parking to go, before we went to the theater. And we were like rushed for time to get to the theater because... Yeah. And we had left early. We were like, might as well go. <laughs> right. And then, of course, I mean, the last one is terribly obvious, but New York City is... Is uh, is really difficult as well. <laughs> Again, it's very similar to Chicago. We spent probably an hour and a half to two hours trying to find a spot to park for sure. We found a spot. We thought it was good, but we we're too close to like an intersection. Oh, it was awful. And then we finally went further and further north, further and further north, and we ended up on One Tenth and First Avenue near Thomas Jefferson Park. Is that the park? Uh, I feel like it has a different name. Okay, well, some park in Harlem, Spanish Harlem. Spanish Harlem. Uh, but so again, it was so difficult to find that spot, and it sucked. And I don't it know was, if many people would do that, but then it ended up being great. Yeah, it was great. Um, and like we said, reading the signs, we did have to in our five days in New York move the van three times because of street cleaning. Oh yeah. But it was an awesome spot. We again the the metro was on like second ave it was just a short walk to the metro and then we could get to everything subway subway yes metro so many things the metro is in houston y'all and it's not even a real subway no No. (laughs) well speaking of houston if you are ever in houston stealth camping here would be easy as hell we would always talk about we live in a developing neighborhood and then there's close to an industrial area just down the street and every time we would drive to work i'd be like we could stealth camp here like nobody's business and we have seen an rv out on the street over here and i was like they are stealth camping for sure yeah houston (laughs) would be very easy to stealth camp Uh, and i think we're doing a disjustice if we don't speak about seattle i think that was not oh, did I not whatsoever. say Seattle? No, we forgot it. Oh, Seattle was. Seattle and San Francisco are the two worst. They were so frustrating. We ended up in Ballard in Seattle. Like, we yeah. started in Seattle, then, like, went up further north, then looked in Fremont. Wasn't going to happen. No. And then we went around uh, University of Washington. Nope. No way. And so we finally ended up in Ballard. And, uh... <sighs> it was just a little further away from everything. So it made us, we had to move the van every day to get to places. Seattle's, I mean, yeah, just like San Francisco, people don't drive. One, because of traffic. Two, because of the, like, angles and slopes. And three, because it's way overpopulated. And if you're bringing up traffic, I don't remember if it was hard to stealth camp, but your van in Toronto. Oh, my God. Yikes. It was hard for us to find stealth camping. We mostly ended up in residential areas. True. Yeah, Toronto is a CF. But then the driving situation, there's so many people and not the infrastructure for it. Right. And it is 
ungodly when again you're in this giant 20 some foot vehicle and people are breaking like on a dime yeah yeah so i would say the the van itself if you plan on stealth camping you gotta have a stealthy van that should be pretty obvious but i think some people overlook that like they have like it's really nice with an awning and like it's terribly obvious that like it's like a motor home or something i just wouldn't feel comfortable parking in a city or leaving my or leaving it there yes yeah, leaving it there because then people know you got all your junk in there. Yeah, I liked that no one thought there was like solar power, laptops, iPads, everything we owned inside that vehicle. It just looked like a crappy van. Yeah, and then cons- I guess then the consensus is the western part of the United States is so much easier to do van life <laughs> for like literally every reason. I don't, I can't think of one better. Uh, like one better part of the eastern side of the United States because it's overpopulated. There's no fr- there's no free BLM land or national forests, and the weather's not as good. There's just I don't know why you would do van life on the east coast. Yeah, I mean kind permanently. Of so yeah, overall, think about your van if you're doing this, and think about the possibilities for stealth camping, and. Just use common sense. Read the crap out of signs. Never put yourself in a bad... We never really risked anything ever. We no, because were... you have time. Like we have... Yeah, if you're doing the van life, you most likely have time. So take time and be patient, like finding the perfect spot. Oh, not the perfect spot, but just a good yeah. spot. Yeah, once you... Yeah, I, my advice would be once you find a spot, then as long as you're not desperate and it's terribly, terribly, you know, like late or, or crowded, I would keep going and use that as like plan B. Uh, because yeah you shouldn't be like you shouldn't be rushed for time or anything yeah (laughs) and mixed use areas and apartments are they can be gold because you got to think about the mindset of those people there's maybe a thousand people living in a complex they don't know who everyone's car is so you can easily just go in and be like unseen unknown yeah so that's that's our advice on stealth camping and we will be releasing another podcast soon but hope you guys enjoyed it thank you